The hardest part about getting a job in GovTech is not your qualification. It's getting through the security clearance. If you're trying to break into GovTech but are facing challenges, this episode is for you. We'll uncover the biggest roadblock and how to push past it. This is the reason why GovTech is attractive, and it's also the same reason why it's very difficult to break in, which is the security clearance. Because when you think about it, um, GovTech, yes, it's interesting with all the other benefits um, you can have with the, the government. The stability special. The stability, the packages you get and stuff like that. But because of the security clearance hurdle that usually is required for most of the GovTech jobs, it makes it more valuable. It makes it more uh, um, coveted by people. Yes. And it's, it's not easy. So the whole uh, the whole hiring process is a bit more formal than in the corporate and, world. And it has to be. It has to be formal because of many reasons. For uh, first of all, uh, we're talking about the government, so they have to uh, be fair to everyone, and being fair to everyone is very tricky. And second, uh, there are real security risk involved, so you have to be very careful. You cannot rush the process. And and the other thing is like. Most of the time, it's like you're getting hired by two entities. You're getting hired by the government agency and you're getting hired by a contracting agency. So you have to interview with both, be likable to both, be trustworthy to both in order to get that offer and to even start that uh, clearance process. Actually, sometimes you are getting uh, um, interviewed by three entities not interviews you're getting the processes with three entities the entity that's hiring you i don't remember the name of the entity but there's an entity in the government that only uh, manages uh hiring government hiring i think it's gsa gsa so you have to go through gsa which is the entity managing the security clearance process and the contractor actually giving you the job so it gets convoluted very fast. That's why the process is super slow. But of course, and it's then, all worth and, it. And you didn't mention the clearance process is run technically by the FBI. Yeah, so it depends. It depends on what level of clearance we're talking about. That's why I always tell people when you try to get into GovTech, it's not necessarily a good idea to start with a job that requires a, um, a security clearance, for example, because there is something lower than a security clearance, which is, how do you call it, Paloma? It's a public trust. It's a public trust, which is... A, it's a lower degree. It's, um, a, but... it's a lower degree of background check. Uh, it takes uh, less time, and there are more jobs with this, um, with with this, this kind of clearance. Yeah. But also they pay less. They are usually less attractive in terms of salary and bonuses and stuff like that. But it's the best way to start. And also the, a person that has a residence, in Amer uh, a U.S. residence, can qualify for it. Exactly. That's one of the main differences with the higher level clearances, like the top secret. Yeah, because people don't realize that because secret clearance job uh, you have to be an American to be, to have access to those jobs. What it does, it, it shrinks the, the hiring pool. pool because anyone with a proper green card or work visa with all the credentials do not have access to those jobs. So if you have a green card, your best place to start is with a public trust uh, 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 clearance and then go from there. By the time you, t you become an American, it's going to be easier. And the other thing, which I think is a hack as well, is to make sure when you are doing your research, when it's time to go to your next job, to make sure even if you're not getting a high clearance <clears throat> sorry, job, you get a job with a company or an agency or a contractor that has high clearance jobs available even if it's not the one you're getting. 
because it's easier to actually transition inside that company from a lower clearance to a higher clearance. Yeah. So imagine like you could get a job at Lockheed Martin without a clearance, but if you eventually want to get a cleared job, it would be easy to find one within their own ecosystem. Yeah. Um, and also, you have to proactively apply to these jobs. So even if you are already in the government, you have a, a low clearance, proactively apply for the next job, for your next promotion to actually increase your security clearance. Because um, a lot of people don't realize there are about five levels that we know about. Because also there are levels that you don't even know. Um, level be beyond uh, um, um, uh, polygraph mm -hmm. that it's not even published. So we're talking about five level that you know that you can go through. You can start with a, a public trust and hack your way through. That to me, that's the best hack to get into, into uh, the space really. Because just going for High uh, clearance is very tricky because um, the way it works, guys, is that you cannot show up to the job and say, hey, I would like you to sponsor me. They have to offer you a job and decide to sponsor you. Yeah. And this is not always evident for one reason. It costs the hiring company between fifteen to $20,000 to, to sponsor you. To sponsor you because it costs a lot of money for the process. Yeah. And another thing is that sometimes people want a clear job, but they haven't done the work to kind of organize their past. <laughs> um, we've seen that a lot. Like, if you want to get a, a clearance, you need to keep track of exactly where you lived. Who were your neighbors at those places? Where you traveled. Where you traveled. And we're talking about like five to ten years of this data. They're going to ask you for the contacts of your neighbors, of your spouse, of your baby mama. So hopefully you're in good terms. Yep. Um, your credit. Your your previous employers. So imagine. And if, keep your credit right. If you left your a previous job, even if it was four, five, six years ago you better have somebody that can vouch for you in those environments because they may get a letter or even a visit um, in, the, in the clearance process. Yeah, keep your uh, credit right. Even if your credit is not great, it doesn't have to be great, but they don't want to see bankruptcy. They don't want to see a lot of debt. They don't want to see driving tickets. Like let me tell you why they don't want to see a lot of debt. Because the reasoning is actually pretty straightforward. If you are in debt, imagine how easy it is to be to get bribed by someone, by by a foreign a bad entity. actor. Yeah. You see, you are two hundred thousand dollars in debt, and the guy say, "I'm gonna pay this off. Just hand me that a uh, 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 a thumb drive with this information." Yeah. So they want to make sure that you are solid, that you are not vulnerable to very easy, uh, uh, that you are not a, a, an easy target in general. Definitely. So. Um, these things is very important to know and to understand. And also, we talked about it already. Get your Security Plus certification because it is required. It is required not only as a technical uh, re uh, requirement, but it is required by the government for you to have. So that make sure you get it right and you renew it every three years because it expires. These are the things you can do to actually position yourself. You know, and a lot of people don't realize all these things. You have to be very intentional about making them happen, because what happens in the industry is everybody want to get this job. There are companies offering uh, jobs with security clearance, but they don't necessarily want to invest twenty thousand dollars in your background check and for you to not even be able to go through it. Exactly. So what happens is they are trying to hire people already with that security clearance and, in place. And that's why it's so easy to clear people that left the military, right? Yeah. Because that, it's people that have a very clear story about and, where they've been, what they've been doing. And it's like 
the government already trusts this person that served our country. And not only that, um, in the military, because it's a government entity, some jobs require a security clearance. So the mili- uh, people in the military transition already, out mm-hmm. and they still have an active clearance. And even if it's not active, the fact that you had it before makes it easier. So to go back to what I was saying, a lot of companies, they have security clearance job, jobs available, but they would like to give it to someone who already have the security clearance. But two things. First, they don't have to pay that fifteen to $20,000. Second, they can have you start working immediately. Yeah. Because even if uh, they are sponsoring you, it might take six months, they have to start paying you when they hire you, depending on the contract. But some contract requires that you start getting paid once you get offered the job until the, the, the background check uh, <coughs> it happens, which is usually sometimes six months to 18 months. So you imagine you hire someone, you cannot charge for their service for 18 months, but you are getting, you, you have to pay them for all that amount of time. So this is the tricky part about it. Another thing to have in mind is that not all companies and not all roles allow um, the contracting agency to sponsor you for a, for a clear job. Sometimes they have to hire somebody with an active clearance, and you're going to see that in the posts that they run. Yeah, sometimes they don't even have the authority. Exactly. That's, that's, that's it's the- like a quota that's given to, exactly. to the contracting agencies. What I want to make sure everybody understands, the best way to get a GovTech job is to start at a lower clearance job. Start looking at... Public trust. Public trust. Start looking at pu- public trust. Um, make your way into the industry. Make your way into the sector. And then work your way up. This is the best way, the easiest way. And definitely don't forget to get your Security Plus.